Hello everyone, happy Tuesday, happy so what day. I hope you're having a great start to your week. And you know, the weather is getting nicer, spring is in the air, am I right? Um, you know, nothing says spring like uh, going to a soccer practice in the rain, which is what I did last night. Oh, excuse me. Um, so at any rate, you know what they say, April showers bring May flowers, although it's not April, it's already May. So I guess May showers bring June flowers. At any rate, I'm thankful for the rain, so it's okay. Um, I hope you're having great weather in your neck of the woods. And, you know, in the spirit of that, today I'm going to be talking about creating a really cool beach tote. And, you know, even if you don't have a beach nearby, I mean, I live in Colorado. We are a totally landlocked state. We still consider it going to the beach when we head on over to the lake. Um, and, you know, it's not really sand. It's more rocky. Um, but, you know, we're going to take what we can get and we call it going to the beach. So, I'm going to say that today's pattern hack that I'm going to go through with you is a beach tote, but really it's just an all around great summer tote, no matter where you're headed. If it's the beach, the farmer's market, the lake, those types of things, I think you're really going to enjoy it. But before we get started, I just thought I would kind of take a little poll from all of you here watching on So What? Uh, because that's kind of what So What is about, right? We come together, we bounce ideas off of each other, we get some tutorials, we learn something new from each other. And I'm just curious to know how many of you out there have tried quilting in the hoop of your embroidery machine? Let me know in the comments or give me a thumbs up if you have tried this technique. Um, you know, and it doesn't have to be a large scale quilt, you know, um, a more sort of daunting project. It can be a little quilty wall hanging or a quilted mug rug or a quilted pillow. Something that you are sandwiching with batting in between. I mean, that's really what a quilt is, right? A sandwich um, of a variety of you know, mediums. It doesn't even need to be fabric to be considered a quilt, but I digress. If you have tried using in the hoop designs or in the hoop quilting motifs to create quilt blocks, I'm interested to know. So let me know uh, in the comments because, you know, I feel like when you hear quilting, it can mean a number of things, right? Quilters, if you consider yourself a quilter, raise your hand, but I find that some people who consider themselves quilters, they are piecers, really. They like to piece together quilt tops and then they sandwich it with batting, they put their backing on and they might even send it off to a long armor to actually quilt the finished piece. That person is also a quilter, right? Even if all they're doing is operating their long arm and long arm quilting other people's finished goods, their own finished goods, things like this. So I think that the term, you know, quilter, just like the term sewer, right, is this huge uh, category with lots of subcategories within it. So it's just interesting how we all identify ourselves as crafters. I think it's interesting. Um, you know, I've heard the term omni crafter, people who literally do it all from knitting to quilling to crochet to quilting, all of these different crafting mediums. And then people who say, I'm a machine embroiderer. I literally embroider using my embroidery machine. I don't sew finished goods. I don't make quilts, things like this. So we all kind of fit into this overall bracket of sewer, sewist, maker, right? And then within that, we have our little categories. So I am just curious to know if you've tried quilting in the hoop of your embroidery machine and what your experience was like 
And if you felt it was daunting and then realized that it was much easier than you anticipated or vice versa. And really what I'm getting at here is our quilty wall hanging embroidery sewing session is available now today for viewing in its entirety. So all these weeks I've been talking about it, May 9th, May 9th, May 9th is the day, and here we are. Now, unlike our live webinars, live webcasts, and video casts, this is a longer format embroidery sewing session. And when I mean, or what I mean by long format is that there are multiple videos throughout the session that you can watch and rewatch and decide what order you want to watch it in, all leading up to creating that beautiful project that you saw on the screen, but also giving you all the great techniques for the process of making that great project. So it's not all about the project. There's lots of information that you will learn sort of in the process of making that that you can apply to your other projects. So most importantly within this embroidery sewing session, you are learning techniques for quilting in the hoop of your embroidery machine. And we will be using, or we are using, end-to-end -end quilting designs from Designs by Juju. And Becky Thompson of Power Tools with Thread, we love Becky, we've worked with her on a number of things uh, here with Sulky. She's such a great teacher and she really explains things so that regardless of your experience or your skill level, you will be able to tackle this project and then move on to other quilty items as well. So you can apply this, again, not only to quilts, but quilted pillows, quilted bags, quilted table runners, quilted placemats. It's so nice to piece something together and not have to send it off to somebody who has a long arm. You can do it in your embroidery machine. And I've used these designs for a few different projects and I was also amazed because what I find so daunting about uh, quilting in the hoop is you've got to match up the end of your first design stitch out with the beginning of your next design stitch out. And as we know, as embroiderers, placement is honestly the hardest part of machine embroidery figuring out how to get perfect placement right where we want it on our fabric, on our project, and matching up those quilting lines in these end-to-end -end quilting designs is really the most daunting part. And once you figure out how easy it is to do this with Becky's tutorials within this embroidery session, you will feel like you can conquer the world <laughs> with end-to-end -end quilting designs. Uh, so I highly suggest if you're interested in quilting in the hoop and learning how these designs work and how, you know, how to resize them for your hoops. If you have a 4x4 hoop, a 6x10 hoop, a magnetic hoop, a standard hoop, you're going to be able to use these designs. So it's, it's just, it's really fun how it comes together and you won't be intimidated by it anymore if you were to start with. Here is the finished quilty wall hanging that we're creating with the kit that comes with this embroidery sewing session. Um, and I shouldn't say it comes with because it is a separate purchase from the session itself. Um, but it's offered at an amazing, amazing sale price right now. Um, it's only $39.99 for all the fabrics, all the threads, all the batting, stabilizer, everything that you need to create this is included in that kit for only $39.99. You also get, with purchase of the session, you will get an entire collection of end-to-end -end quilting designs. And let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can see. Can you see the cute quilting design? It's got a sewing machine, a little thread spool, and everything 
comes together with some little swirlies of thread and it's just so cute. I, I absolutely love it. You could make this for a wall in your sewing room, your, your crafting room door. You can further personalize it with a little saying. Um, you can make a pillow out of it instead of hanging it on your wall. Make this the front panel of a pillow, add an envelope closure backing, and then stuff it with a pillow form. So cute. At any rate, you will get that uh, sulky quilt end-to-end -end quilting design in tons of different hoop sizes and then two hoop orientations, both horizontal and vertical. So again, depending on the hoops that you have and your hoop parameters, you will be able to use those designs. You'll also get the files for that sewing machine applique that has a little 3D fabric popping off of it. You'll also get the designs for the friendship stars that go in the corners. These are done as in the hoop appliques and they are multi-step applique designs and they just really add to the finished product. And you can use those designs for tons of other projects as well. So like I said, it's not all about that project. You get lots of technique tutorials and Becky is really guiding you throughout. And I, I have gotten so many comments already this morning because um, finally the session was ready for viewing this morning. And I was going to pull some up here for you. And somehow my window has disappeared, but I'm going to bring it on over so I can share with you some of the comments um, because they're just so, so great. We love hearing all the comments and all the feedback. This is how we prepare future events for you all and make sure that we are, you know, hitting the right notes. So if I can find what I was looking for, that would be great. All right. Isn't it funny? Whenever I want to look for something, I just can't find it. Here we go. Um, and some questions have come in too. That's the other thing is we have great support for these embroidery sewing sessions. Anytime somebody asks a question on any of the pages within the lesson, because there's a little comment box on every single lesson, that goes directly to me and a couple of other people on our Sulky support staff, and we can answer it like that. So you get immediate feedback. Um, and we are really helping you along the way. So some people are asking about the Embrilliant software. Becky also talks about using software to further your embroidery education, especially with this project, but you don't have to have software at all. You can complete this without having any sort of software. She does mention a free version of Embrilliance that is gonna allow you to print some paper templates um, to you know, help you out in your um, embroidery placement. So that's a really great resource as well. So someone says, Becky is a gem and so kind and generous in sharing her knowledge with all of us. Um, I have learned a lot from her and I blame her for my Luminaire and Scan and Cut purchases. <laughs> so thank you, Becky. Another person says, I've been following and using Julie's designs since I got into machine embroidery back in 2003. I love her designs and I came to discover Becky via a YouTube that she did explaining how to use Julie's embroideries. The two of them are absolutely awesome. So those are just a small fraction of the great comments we've been getting today uh, with the embroidery sewing session. So I do hope that you'll be able to give it a try. And again, uh, this is the kit that is the optional add-on purchase for today's quilty wall hanging embroidery sewing session. And I shouldn't say today's because since it is a session, it's available to purchase and watch at any time. So it's not a live event. You don't have to go in today right away and start and finish and go through the whole process. That's the great thing about these sessions. You can start and then we have kind of chunked out the content 
into manageable sections. So you can, you know, schedule your sewing time as your time allows. Um, you can choose to go through the entire thing start to finish, or you have these natural stopping points where, as time allows, you can come back into your sewing room and pick up right where you left off. So it's kind of cool in that regard. But you can see these really great fabrics that um, come together to make the quilty wall hanging. Some soft and sheer stabilizer, some batting, all these great threads. I mean, this is a really great deal for only $39.99. Um, I also wanted to mention, because I brought this up a couple of weeks ago, we had a uh, kind of mock webcast here on So What, and we went through the Key Fobs webcast um, that we did with Designs by Juju, and I represented it here on So What absolutely for free, and we did it live here so that all of you who haven't tried our education platform over at sewingonline.sulky.com, you could get a taste for what our webcasts and video casts are all about. So during that event, I gave everybody a sneak peek into one of our brand new products at sulky.com. Do I have a drum roll? Mm, I don't think I have a drum roll sound effect. I really need one. I do have party noise. <laughs> it doesn't have the same effect as a drum roll though. So, okay, bear with me. Anyways, during our key fobs in the hoop tutorial, I showed off this brand new clear embroidery tape. And I said, in a couple weeks, we're going to launch this at sulky.com and you hear, heard it here first. So since you are our loyal So What watchers and followers on social media, you are the first to know that it is now available at sulky.com. Hold on, hold on. Now, the reason I am mentioning it, other than the fact that I'm just so excited that we now have this, because it is amazing and a game changer within the Hoop Projects, is that Becky um, uses an embroidery tape for the end-to-end -end quilting process. And what better tape to use than sulky clear embroidery tape? I'll show you about it in just a or I'll tell you what show you about it. I'll tell you about it in just a sec, but the cool thing, there's so many cool things about it, but with the end-to-end -end quilting, you can extend your quilt top in the hoop of your embroidery machine by using stabilizer and your batting underneath. So if you want to get your quilting all the way, even off the edge of your quilt top, and obviously that's not going to fit in the hoop of your embroidery machine. You can tape these layers, right? You can tape your quilt top to your stabilizer and then have your stabilizer attached to your batting or even vice versa. And then you can either use a magnetic hoop or a standard hoop and you're basically extending your quilt top so that you can quilt beyond it, and then you'll trim that away before you bind your project. So this clear embroidery tape is really unlike anything you're gonna find out there. If you are used to using paper tape, even some people use masking tape or painter's tape for securing fabrics to stabilizer, or if you're making a full in the hoop project that has a backing to it, such as our key fobs, where we had to remove our hoop from the machine, put our backing fabric underneath the hoop, and then put our hoop back onto the machine to finish the project. If you are doing that and you're using these other kinds of tapes to secure that fabric on the underside of your hoop, what happens when you sort of misplace your tape and you end up stitching over it? When you turn your hoop over, then you gotta pick your paper tape or your masking tape or what have you out from the stitching line. 
sometimes that can cause your stitches to kind of pop out of place, right? Not to mention, it's annoying. So enter this clear embroidery tape. First off, watch how cleanly it rips, right? You don't even need to use scissors, nothing. If you end up stitching along it, it tears completely cleanly along the edge, okay? And you can create smaller pieces of it simply by tearing it. It is so awesome. Am I right? I, I think it deserves another round of applause. I, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Also, you can use it and reuse it a couple of times, and it'll retain its stickiness. So what I like to do, and I'm kind of upset with myself for using such a big piece to um, show you all this, but I'm going to use it and reuse it. And I can so easily make it smaller, like so easily when I don't have tape all over my hands. Tears away so cleanly. So what I like to do is I'll use it in my project and then I just kind of stick it to the side of my machine right here. And that way when I'm doing some other steps of the process, there is my tape. It's in my pre-made sizes or what have you. And especially if I'm making multiples, like 20 key fobs to give as teacher appreciation gifts, things like this, it is so easy. And uh, you guys are going to thank me for it, <laughs> maybe, hopefully. Um, so it comes in packs of two. You get two rolls of tape that are 10 yards each. It's one inch wide. You will get two rolls with your purchase. And please let me know how you like it because uh, it's amazing. And if you signed up for our uh, quilty wall hanging embroidery sewing session, and if you're grabbing a kit today to go along with that, why not throw in some clear embroidery tape with your purchase because you're going to want to use it for this project. It makes things so much easier. Barbara says, I will just thank you now. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> All right. So now that we have discussed in the hoop quilting, although let's see, I want to see if there's any questions thus far about our embroidery sewing session or about in the hoop quilting. Uh, Peg says, I used pink masking tape yesterday and it got stuck on the machine and made a big mess. Ugh. I mean, I tell you what. Maybe give this stuff a try and see how you like it. If you like it better, I kind of think you will. All right. <laughs> um, and Barb says, I use painter's tape, but sometimes it rolls up on the underside. Looking forward to trying the new clear tape. I agree. I find that the painter's tape just isn't strong enough. Incidentally, I find it isn't strong enough when I'm painting either. I always get little drips behind the painter's tape. Just saying. Masking tape is never strong enough. It also curls up during the stitch out. Um, so I'm really, really happy with this stuff and I think that you will as well. All right. Oh, Betsy says, I love the key fobs I made. My friends love them. Excellent. Does the tape dissolve? It is not water soluble tape, um, so you do need to remove it. Uh, but the great thing is, you know, as I mentioned, if you happen to accidentally stitch over it, it does tear quite cleanly right along the stitching line. It is so much more simpler to use than that paper stuff that will get stuck um, and kind of gum up your uh, needle as well. Uh, what bobbin thread, hey Deb, what bobbin thread is used for the wall hanging? Do you match the top? Um, great question. So for the wall hanging, when we're doing the quilting for it, the backing is actually added after the quilting, which I know sounds so weird. And there is a reason for that. Um, it's because we're adding the appliques and the other embroideries to the piece 
after it's been quilted. So you're going to see the stitching on the wrong side uh, of those other elements. So if that doesn't bother you, you can do your end-to-end -end quilting and your subsequent embroideries with your backing intact. But Becky shows and explains why it's a better idea to add your backing after that's complete. And then you can do some additional quilting if you want, quilting in the ditch um, or something like this uh, to further quilt your piece. So for the bobbin thread for that portion or the embroidery portion, I would use 60 weight sulky bobbin thread. Um, for the end to end quilting, we're using a 30 weight blendables thread. And then for the machine embroidery, we're using the 40 weight poly deco thread for those appliques. So I would use the 60 weight sulky bobbin thread because it's going to be inside of our finished quilt. If you are doing end to end quilting and you want to use this design for something else, and you have your backing and your batting and your top all together, either floating on top of the hoop or in a magnetic hoop, I would use that pretty 30 weight blendables thread in the bobbin for that quilting as well. That way, the back of your project is just as pretty as the right side. Even if you're just using a plain fabric, then you have that blendables thread that's kind of popping off of the surface of your backing and you've almost made it reversible. Um, so I hope that answers your question. That's my recommendation. Okay. Uh, will Becky talk about using scan and cut to cut out the applique? So uh, great question. Um, during the embroidery session, she does mention that you can use your scan and cut for the Friendship Star appliques and the sewing machine applique. And there are files included for using your cutting machine for those elements. Um, but she does mostly focus on doing the applique the more sort of traditional way um, with the multi-steps and the trimming away of your fabric. But in uh, her videos, uh, she also shows using the pre-cut pieces. So if you do have a scan and cut or another kind of cutting machine, uh, you will find that helpful in those videos as well. Trish says, I started watching the Quilty Wall Hanging videos. They are very easy to follow. I can't wait to start making the project. Thank you, Trish. Thank you for letting us know. Okay. Um, Debbie says, it's a great format. Once I purchased an online class from a vendor and you could only use it during the live broadcast. Very frustrating. Yeah, so I hope you will enjoy the embroidery sewing session format because as I said, you can go in and pick up right where you left off. It actually remembers your progress as long as you are clicking on complete lesson. Um, when you come back and log back in, It'll say like resume session and you just click on resume. It'll take you right back to where you left off. Um, so it's really cool. And you have this as a reference for for all time, as long as you have an account at sewingonline.sulky.com. So the next time you go to do an end to end quilting design, you can come back and refer to these lessons. If you want to remake the project, you can come back and watch just the project videos. If you want to use that sewing machine applique design for a little mug rug or a little, you know, even gift card uh, or uh, greeting card for your sewing buddies or sewing guild, you can come back and watch just the applique portion of that design. So it's pretty cool. And um, I think you'll all enjoy it if you have not um, experienced one of our embroidery sewing sessions in the past. Our most popular ones are with designs by Juju, and this one is really no exception. All right, so let's get to our project today because I don't know about you, but I'm really looking forward to some summertime, um, at least some sunshine. And I mean, I live in Colorado where we have like 344 days of sunshine every year, and <laughs> I'm still craving 
the summertime sunshine. So um, creating this beach tote or this version of this tote and kind of transforming it with a beachy vibe um, has really gotten me into the spirit. So I'm going to show you the original bag that I started with and we'll go over some of those details of the, the bag. Um, sorry, I'm just getting some fuzz off of it. And then I'll show you my uh, beachy interpretation of the bag. And please continue to ask your questions along the way. Uh, because if you are commenting, asking questions, giving me those emojis, engaging with the live stream today, you could win our Hello Summer Machine Embroidery Collection valued at $34.99. So this is our Hello Summer Machine Embroidery Collection. It contains six designs in three sizes. And these are great for so many of your summer makes and so, so cute. Um, and I'm going to be featuring the Life is Better at the Beach design. That's what I'm going to show off on the beach tote. So be sure you are commenting, asking questions, giving me emojis, and chatting me up today so that you are automatically eligible to win today's little gifty from Sulky. All right, so I decided to start with the Aurora bag from Sally Tomato. And some of you might remember this bag because it was launched during our 2021 New Year's Eve sew along. This sew along was a four hour live event and you can still register for it and watch it in its entirety over at sewingonline.sulky.com. When you register for it, you will get the Aurora bag pattern free. You will also get an embroidery collection of our sewist patches for free. Um, so during the New Year's Eve sew along, Jessica Barrera of Sally Tomato took us through how to create the Aurora bag from start to finish in real time and I took everybody through how to create our freestanding patches. And that's what we used to embellish our bags. So this is the little patch collection and I created these out of faux leather that matched the handles of the Aurora bag. So this is a collection that is still available at sulky.com. But if you sign up for the New Year's Eve sew along, I know it's not New Year's Eve 2021 anymore, but it's still great video content, and you get some great freebies. This digital pattern, as well as three patch embroidery designs. So much a uh, better deal to grab up the sew along rather than buy all of these uh, digital products separately. But anyways, the patch collection has Sewaholic. It also has I Made This, and it also has sewing mends the soul and our video tutorial takes you through how to create patches in the hoop as well as how to create the aurora bag from start to finish so head on over to sewingonline.sulky.com put the 2021 new year's eve event uh, in your cart and you'll have access to the pattern and patches and then you can transform the aurora bag for your summer tote, just like I did. So we're gonna start with the Aurora bag, and let me just show you some of the features of this bag. Like I said, some of you probably have already made this because I recognize your names, and I know that a lot of you were with me on New Year's Eve 2021. It was pretty celebratory because we were really looking forward to putting 2020 behind us, um, as many people were. It was a rough, rough year with COVID at its peak. Um, so it's it's a great event and um, fun to watch us bringing in a new year when we all really, really needed it. Um, but at any rate, this is one of the versions. Oh, my light just turned off. Excuse me. Um, this is one of the versions of the bag, and as you can see, it's a very roomy tote. 
So that's why I thought to myself, this is going to make a great beach tote. We need something that's going to hold our towel, our book, our shoes, our hat. You get the idea. So, and if you have three kids like me, you're also carrying their stuff for the most part. Um, so a large tote is really great for that. So it has these uh, uh, shoulder straps, right? Two of these out of faux leather. You could totally omit these straps and just sew the adjustable webbing strap if you wanted even more of a casual look to your bag. You can choose one strap or the other or do both and have the option, right? So it's fully adjustable with this buckle slide and you can just wear it wherever you want. You can go totally cross body with it. Um, that's the great thing about this. And this strap is completely removable. So if you're tired of having this on there and you, you want more of a, I don't know, boardwalk going out bag, you can quickly remove your wedding strap and be on your way. It also features a great um, metal look zipper. It's not a metal zipper. It's a nylon coil zipper that has the look of metal to it. And it zips all the way open to reveal a double pocket, right? It's one big pocket and you sew a line, a line down the center to create two pockets. Now, this is a, one of the things um, that I altered because I wanted to be sure that, basically I wanted to be sure that my sunscreen was not going to leak and get all over the place. I use those spray sunscreens a lot, especially for my kids when I can't get them to stop, you know, running around at the pool. I'll just quickly spray them so that they can keep going. <laughs> and at least I feel like they're getting some sun protection from that. But anyway, I really wanted that bottle of spray sunscreen to not go anywhere. So I altered the size of my pockets so that my spray sunscreen could just fit right inside one side and then it gave me a larger pocket next to it that I could put several pairs of sunglasses and even some goggles if needed. So that's one hack that I did. Um, anyways, back to the original Aurora bag. So along with the straps and the zipper and the pocket, it also has this really great structured bottom to it that um, helps give it its shape. Now, mine has been kind of been stored a little bit, so um, it looks a little bit wrinkly. But anyway, this is what gives it its great shape on the bottom. So when you have it all filled, you know, it stands up quite nicely and it gives a really great shape and uh, depth to the bag. So this, this is another thing that I changed as well. So this has some really designery sort of fancier elements in that it's got the faux leather straps, the faux leather base, and then the, um, you know, uh, the, the gold or silver um, or nickel hardware that you can choose. And then it also has a cute little tie on the zipper, just little details that make it, you know, more designery, right? And less homemade looking. So that's the Aurora bag as it was intended. So I'm going to go over how I hacked it for the beach, and then we'll go through the tutorial of how I embroidered the front. All right. And keep your questions coming in. Um, all right. Okay. All of a sudden, all of these comments came out, so I thought that maybe I was glitching here, but... Um, I guess not. Okay, so of course, first thing I did to switch up this pattern was add machine embroidery. I mean, with such a big bag, this gives us a great canvas for embellishing and really making the project our own. And if you happen to have a bunch of solid fabric hanging around or you can't find a print that you're really in love with, um, you know, the Aurora bag has 
a cotton fabric that is then interfaced to give it lots of body. It also has the addition of fusible fleece inside, which also gives it more body. Well, I started with a canvas fabric so that I didn't have to do the interfacing step and all of that. So I went with a more durable fabric on the front. I still used that fusible fleece interlining to give it that structure. And then I chose a cotton print for the lining uh, that I happen to have in my stash. So if you're looking for canvas fabric and you're like me and your fabric store has like three varieties and you've already bought all three of those for past projects, <laughs> um, you might wanna go with a solid and then add machine embroidery to make it your own and add those pops of color. Also, when I'm adding a design that has lots of color to it, I prefer going with a solid fabric anyways so that the design really pops and you can read it nicely, all of those good things. So canvas fabric, first hack or choice that I made. Um, I was considering not doing these straps because I really thought that the faux leather was going to sort of take away from the beachy vibe I was going for. But I happen to have some leftover um, faux leather in this color. This is actually leftover from our 2022 New Year's Eve event where we did um, a um, sort of like organizer uh, project. And I just happened to have this color. And when I put it over the yellow, I was like, I don't know what's happening to my light. I apologize. Apparently I need a new one. Need a little upgrade. Here we go. <laughs> so when I put this faux leather up against the yellow fabric, I just thought it looked so good together. And I could always kind of just use my webbing strap anyways, which gives me that more casual vibe feel. But then I have the option, right, to switch between straps. So I wanted to, you know, not deprive myself of that option. So I went with the straps anyways. Um, let's see. The other thing I did was I used a dual head zipper so that I could open the bag from the center. See my two, my double zipper? Could open the bag from the center and get everything that out that I need to from either side. Um, I also made my zipper, I didn't trim it, so it's much longer uh, than the other zipper in the bag, but that one's pretty long as well. So I've got my two little um, cork fabric remnants, tiny little strips, because I just cannot bear to throw away any faux leather or cork fabric. It's just too precious. So, I mean, these are like eight inch, eighth inch wide little strips, and I just tied them around my zipper pull. I think these are actually left over from when I made a cork tassel, and I accidentally cut off a couple of the little tassels when I was constructing it, and I set them aside in this little basket that I have of little tiny cork remnants that I use for um, things like this, little tabs that I might need for hardware, um, little loops on things like zipper pouches, just add a little loop for a little designer element. And I just thought, check it out. I already have some little strips. So I added those, even though it's not the same faux leather color, it's like a metallic natural cork, just a little, you know, element. So a double zipper, I think that was really cool. And you can see my zipper matches my canvas fabric. So it doesn't have to be that metal look zipper that really elevated um, our Aurora bag for New Year's Eve and made it a little more elegant. Uh, using a nylon zipper that matches uh, your bag, even better if you can get it to match perfectly, which I managed to do somehow. Um, it just makes it kind of disappear um, and gives it a little more casual feel. All right, so another thing I'm kind of just, I don't know, I'm super proud of, I guess. For the base of the bag, I didn't want to use my fancy faux leather, and 
I only had this much left over for the straps. I thought, and I'm always thinking this, I don't know why, but denim fabric is so great for summer projects. I really don't know why it looks so good with bright summer colors and neons and, you know, I mean, it's not like we're out there wearing jeans over the summer, right? But I just thought not only does it give it that casual feel that we want at the beach, but it's also super durable. So as the base of the bag that's getting put on the sand or put on the dock or put on the ground, denim fabric is going to be super durable for that. Whereas your faux leather might get scratched up, things like that. Now you could certainly put in purse feet and that was an option during our New Year's Eve sew along. Um, I did not put purse feet on mine, um, but you certainly could and that's going to help elevate it off of the ground as well. But I just thought I would add denim for my base and I still used the uh, heavyweight craft interfacing for the bottom of the bag, which gives it that great structure, right? I mean, it can almost stand on its own. Um, and actually it would stand on its own if it weren't for all of this hardware and all the straps that I added. That's what's making it kind of fall over. But you could see once it's full of your towels and your swimsuit and all these, you know, accoutrements for the beach, that it's gonna kind of stand up on its own and look really great. So that's basically what I did to hack the pattern. I didn't do much else, but just make some creative decisions about the materials I was using and what have you. So let's go through the uh, tutorial of those change-ups. Um, and if you happen to already have your Aurora bag pattern left over from New Year's Eve, break it out, New Year's Eve 2021, I should add, Break it out and use it again and just rethink it for something else like the beach. So here we are. We've got our sunscreen. That's the kind of sunscreen I'm talking about. Inevitably, like my kids will grab it or something hits it or something in the bag and we've got a sunscreen mess. Ooh, the other thing I wanted to mention was if you happen to have laminated cotton fabric or even oil cloth, you can line your pocket with oil cloth or laminated cotton. You could even create your entire lining out of those fabrics and it would be easily cleaned out, wiped up. It would be moisture resistant. So if one of your kids throws in a damp swimsuit or damp towel, it's not gonna harm the rest of your bag. Um, so that would be a really great substitution for the lining fabric of this bag. And then if you have a sunscreen spill um, or something like that, you can just wipe it up and then clean it with a wet towel or like a Clorox wipe and you're good to go. Um, so you can find oil cloth in usually the home deck area on the long, long, long bolts. Um, or you can find laminated cotton a lot online in some really great prints. Um, and you can just get, you know, like a yard or so. I can't remember how much um, how much you need for the lining. Um, you will need some extra for that pocket though, so keep that in mind. You can also use your own quilting cotton fabric or lightweight cotton fabric and laminate it yourself with like a lightweight fusible vinyl of sorts. I feel like that's gonna be the more pricey option and you're gonna have multiple steps for that. Um, but if you're in love with a fabric you want to use for the lining, uh, you can also seek out some of those um, fusible vinyls. It is going to change some of the things um, for constructing your tote because then you're working with a vinyl and you can't touch your hot iron to that and things of this nature. So be sure to account for those um, tweaks as well um, if you're substituting that kind of fabric inside of your inside of your tote. Apologies for that. Okay, my studio seems to be falling apart. So first up, we're going to do the machine embroidery per usual. I always like to start with embroidery wherever I can because then I can center up my design. Um, and if it's a little bit askew, um, then I can, I can kind of cheat it 
um, and cut my uh, fabric after the fact and make sure it's centered um, or straight, things like that. So I'm showing a magnetic hoop here because let's face it, I am addicted to magnetic hoops and I need a support group. Um, no, but seriously, we have these at silky.com and they are absolute game changers for machine embroidery. Magnetic hoops mixed with silky clear embroidery tape and you're off to the races, loving life and loving your embroidery process. All right, I know I'm gushing, but I love it. So you can certainly use your standard hoop for this. Um, if your uh, sandwich that you are hooping proves to be too thick for your standard hoop, don't force it. Hoop only your stabilizer, and then you can put your fusible fleece lined fabric over the top of your stabilizer and use some KK2000 to secure all of your layers before you do your machine embroidery. And that's right. I did my embroidery with my fusible fleece already attached to my fabric. And it gave it almost a trapunto y feel um, where, you know, the heavy stitches in this particular embroidery design, which again is our Hello Summer Beach embroidery design, those heavy stitch areas knock down the fabric and the fleece. And then the areas where there are no stitches almost puff up a little bit. So it looks really neat on the finished bag. So that's why I chose to uh, fuse my fusible fleece to my canvas fabric and then add my stabilizer behind, which I used Sulky Stiffy Stabilizer, which is a heavyweight tearaway stabilizer. That was my sandwich in my magnetic hoop. So if you're using a standard hoop, hoop only the Sulky Stiffy Stabilizer, spray it with some KK2000, and then position your fusible fleece lined canvas fabric over the top. Everybody with me? Okay. So you're going to begin your embroidery design. Oh, that's not my embroidery design. You're gonna begin your embroidery design and be sure to clip all of those jump threads with each thread change as you're moving along in the design. And it's very straightforward. I used the largest design size in the set. So if you grab up the entire machine embroidery collection, as I mentioned, all six designs come in three sizes. You'll get a size for a four by four hoop, a five by seven hoop, and a six by 10 hoop. I used the largest six by 10 size for my tote because my tote is huge and I don't want my embroidery design to look so tiny. Now, if you're using a design that's maybe along one of the lower edge corners, you could go a little bit smaller with that. But I wanted my design front and center um, and I really love just the look of a large scale embroidery design um, on that. So I went with the largest size and you simply go through your embroidery process. Now, if you grab up our Hello Summer machine embroidery palette, you will get all six designs in three sizes, as well as the 10 spools of sulky rayon thread that are featured within the designs. So you won't have to go hunting for the perfect pink or what have you that's in the design. You will have all the colors you need right at your fingertips and it's a great deal. You basically get the designs for free when you purchase it, it uh, as a palette. So it's a really great deal and you'll get 10 spools of sulky thread. And as you can see, these colors are perfect for spring. They're kind of, or spring, what? For summer. <laughs> They're kind of this rainbow palette, um, and I'm sure you'll you'll lose use these colors for a lot of things. So at any rate, um, this is also um, our freebie for today. One lucky viewer who is watching, commenting, uh, engaging with me today could win the Hello Summer Machine Embroidery Collection. Okay, just wanted to mention that for all the latecomers who might have missed that in the beginning of uh, today's episode. 
So at any rate, we're going to finish up the machine embroidery and then we're just going to remove it from the hoop and we're going to tear away the stiffy stabilizer. Now we've got our front piece, then you'll cut your back piece, fuse your fusible fleece to it, and you can start constructing the bag. So as I mentioned, I used denim for the base of the bag. And yes, I used the leg of a pair of jeans. I measured this leg and it was perfect for the base of the bag. I cut off the seams and I used the uh, most usable portion of the leg. Um, I tried to steer clear of the knee area because, of course, when we are repurposing, reusing, recycling jeans for sewing projects, we want to make sure that it's going to last. Um, and oftentimes the knee area and the rear area are the portions of the fabric that you want to discard uh, because they're just the most worn. Um, unless, you know, you happen to be at the thrift store, sometimes I find jeans that look so brand new and they're like five bucks, three bucks. Um, just make sure that you're getting a large enough size so that you can use that entire leg um, or not the entire leg, but you know, maybe, I don't know, 18 or 20 usable inches of the leg portion for the base of your bag. So it was really a happy accident. I measured the width of the leg and I was able to cut off the seams instead of, you know, trying to have to incorporate those into the bag. Um, but if you want, you can remove the seam along one side, flatten out the leg, and then use that other, either the inseam or side seam, as like a decorative center line along the bottom base of your back. So that would be another, you know, cool thing to incorporate into your beach tote as well. So I just measured out my base piece. This is just the front of a pair of jeans. Um, and I cut away the back and there you have it. Um, totally free, basically, um, piece of fabric for the base of my tote. Oh, we're a little out of order here. Apologies for that. Here is the design, uh, stitching that last step, which is the lettering design. And then here we have the finished tote. So I kind of went over all of the hacks that I did. You can see I've got the faux leather straps. I also have the webbing strap created. I used uh, a mustard yellow poly deco thread for the entire construction of the bag. So my straps, both my white webbing strap and my faux leather straps have yellow thread um, as all the top stitching. So it really ties together the whole look of the tote. And oh yeah, as I also mentioned, I changed the dimensions of my pocket. So I have one pocket that totally fits my sunscreen bottle and you want to make sure when you are sizing something for your pocket, let's say you want a sunglasses pocket that just fits your heart-shaped sunglasses, you want to make sure that you allow a little bit for, you know, the, the circumference of your item as well. So you don't want to just measure across, you want to give yourself some allowance so that, you know, it can pop out and fit that sunscreen or um, sunglasses as well. Um, so feel free to change up the dimensions of your pocket, add another pocket to the opposite lining side. Right now there's only a pocket along one side, uh, but if you want more, uh, you know, pocket areas, because again, this is a super roomy tote, you might want some more pockets, you can easily add that same pocket to the other side and just change up the dimensions as well. So I hope that gives you a little inspiration for getting a little beachy with things, bringing a little summertime into your sewing room and getting some more mileage out of that really great Aurora pattern that we all made for New Year's Eve 2021. And if you missed out on that New Year's Eve sew along, you can go on over to sewingonline.sulky.com and register for it and watch it right away in its entirety. 
all of our webcasts, videocasts, special events, and sessions. Once the live event is over, it's always available on demand for you to watch at any time. So even if you can't attend one of our live events, be sure to register for anything that suits your fancy on our education offerings page, and you'll be able to view it at any time in your own personal library. Same applies for our embroidery sewing session. This is always an on-demand event. Um, I probably shouldn't even call it an event. Um, it's really like a longer format course, but it has no pressure, no grades, and you can finish whenever you want. Um, so I hope you will all enjoy that embroidery sewing session now that it is up and running. Um, and I just got some feedback while we were talking, in fact. Um, so I really enjoy the fact that, you know, we have this community page associated with our sessions as well, where everybody who's in the session together can go and post their pictures and ask questions of each other, as well as the Sulky support staff and Designs by Juju and Becky Thompson of Power Tools with Thread. So I'm just going to make sure that I have addressed most of the questions. And if I don't get to your question today, you can always email us at info at sulky.com. And we are always here for you. All right. <laughs> Christy says, wow, this episode was a beach bag full of tips and hacks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, Jackie says, I usually lay the fabric over the item to make sure the pocket is big enough. Definitely helps ensure they'll fit. Great idea. Instead of laying your object over your pocket piece and then measuring, lay the pocket piece over the item. Jackie, you're the best. Thanks for that. What a great idea. All right. Esther says, thanks for the inspiration. I love my Aurora bags. Uh, Helen says, denim is a heavier fabric. What thread weight are you using? So that is a great question. Um, the denim fabric that I used was from a pretty worn pair of jeans, and it was rather lightweight. But thank you for bringing this up because if you are repurposing denim from, let's say, a stretchier pair of jeans um, or a more heavyweight pair of jeans, uh, you probably want to go up to a jeans needle. Okay, I used a top stitch needle for the entire construction and also for the machine embroidery of this bag. I never changed my needle. I started with a fresh one and I used it for the embroidery and the construction and it worked out great for everything. An 80-12 top stitch needle. Um, but if you are working with a heavier weight denim, I would go up to a jeans needle just for uh, the base portion of the bag. So when you are adding your interfacing to that pa uh, piece and when you are stitching that piece to your canvas outer rectangles. Then you can change back to your top stitch needle or what have you if you want. Um, but I would go to a heavier needle. I would still use that 40 weight poly deco thread. It is a really strong thread and 40 weight is typically a bit heavier weight already from what you might consider like an all purpose weight thread. So it's going to work for that as well. Cheryl says, I got to put in a book pocket. Great idea. So you need a bigger pocket potentially on the opposite side of your, um, you know, pocket with the stitching lines. And you could also interface that pocket if you want to use it for like a tablet or a Kindle or something. Um, just put some batting in between your pocket layers um, and then you have a little bit more, um, you know, protection for your device if you want to um, be taking that on the boat or uh, to the river or to the pool. All right. Yep, Jennifer says you can get good jeans to reuse at Goodwill or consignment shop. And you can use them for so many great things. Um, in fact, I have a little denim shelf pillow that's kind of patriotic inspired to 
to share with you in the coming weeks. So we'll be using the other leg of those jeans to create that cute little pillow project coming up. <laughs> All right. Um, Yvonne says, I love this bag and can't wait to make one for my daughter. She lives in sunny California, spends a lot of time at the beach. This design collection will be perfect for that, but you could also use any of these great designs from the collection on your tote. I love the fun in the sun design. Last year I used that to make a little cork sunglasses pouch with a zipper um, and that was really cute, but that could also look great on your tote. And it's not beach specific per se. So if you aren't lucky enough to live in Southern California or um, the coast of Florida um, and you want to change up the design, you can choose fun in the sun. You can choose uh, summer dress code with the flip flops. So, so cute. And again, all of these come in the small, medium and large size. So you can really go up to a really big design um, on any of those within the collection. All right, what hoop size did you select on the Epic when using dye magnetic hoops to embroider on the bag being shown today? Uh, so I used a 200 by 200 hoop for that large design. Um, I believe that's the one that I used. No, I didn't use the 200. I used the 200 by 260, I think. I'm looking at it now and I think that's the design, uh, or excuse me, that's the hoop that I used. So whenever you don't have, let's say I don't have a six by 10 hoop, I just go up to a larger size hoop um, to make sure that I can stitch out that design. So yes, I think that is what I did. All right, Trish says, I just ordered the quilty wall hanging kit and the new clear tape. All right. <laughs> Trish is understanding today's assignment. Thank you, Trish. <laughs> no, I kid. But I think you're really going to love that project and love, you know, watching it come together and especially love watching your machine do all the quilting for you right in front of your eyes. It's really going to open up your world for things you can create on your home sewing machine. Um, and once you get comfortable with those end to end quilting designs, you will want to create so many other things um, and have the confidence that, you know, your stitching is going to look so, so great over the top of something that is even super intricately pieced or very simply pieced. You can dress it up, add lots and lots of uh, uh, quilting stitches, or you can go with a larger quilting design that is more spread out so that your piecing really shines. So lots of options within those sizes of end-to-end -end quilting designs. So be sure and register for our embroidery sewing session. Start watching it today or this weekend. Put together your quilty wall hanging. It is on sale for only $39.99. Everything you need is in this kit. And then all of your design files are delivered to you once you sign up for the session. So it all works together um, uh, really nicely. Karen says, I love quilting in the hoop. I have so much more control. Yes, for me, it just takes that anxiety away that I'm gonna mess something up after all of these hours and days and sometimes weeks of piecing something together. I certainly don't want my quilting to mess that up. So I like trusting my good old embroidery machine to do most of the work for me. <laughs> All right, let's see. Suzanne says, if you're going to purchase a magnetic hoop, what size do you recommend first? So I actually recommend getting the largest size that's available for your machine, brand, make, and model. And you can always use smaller designs in a larger hoop, even though sometimes that's not recommended, but you always can do that. You can't use a large design in a small hoop, conversely. So I would go with the largest one that you can afford, and then you can always add smaller hoops as your budget allows, or you know, put them on your 
Mother's Day list, your Christmas list. Drop some hints for when people say, oh, you have everything. What could I possibly get you for your birthday? Another magnetic hoop to add to your collection. So check them out at sulky.com. You'll plug in your machine brand, make, and model, and it will tell you the available sizes for your machine. Another thing you can do is say to yourself, which size hoop am I always using in my studio? And go with that size hoop. And then, you know, add in others as you can. All right. Jennifer says, with embroidery, you can make anything your own. It's so lovely. I second that. And that's why I love embroidery so much is we can take our Aurora tote and each one of us can make it a totally different way with machine embroidery and fabric choices and little hacks here and there that make it our own. And that is the greatest thing about sewing. So with that, I will leave you today and I hope you run to your sewing rooms and make something awesome today, this weekend. Join us for our quilty wall hanging because I want to see everybody's creations over on our community page there. And have a wonderful rest of your day and week. I'll see you next Tuesday for another So What?